Continuing now on Daf Zion Amid Bays, three lines down from the top, Omar Mar. Omar Rebbe, Nirim Divre Rabbi Yossi ben Muchlot, the Divre Rabbi Meir be Muzgar. So the Brysa that we had, we'll call it number one, has Rebbe understanding in the following way. We can accept Rabbi Yossi and allow for the Kohen, I'm sorry, we can accept for Rabbi Yossi, who would not allow for the Kohen to do the Bidika when the Mitzora is afflicted with what looks like Tsaras, in the case of a Mukhlat, which means that what's going to happen here? At, at this point, if he's a Mukhlat, then the best you could hope for is that the Kohen will declare him Tar. But if, on the other hand, he might declare him Tameh, and we said that according to Rabbi Yossi, the coin can't uh, decide, well, after I check out the Taras, I'm going to decide whether or not to declare Tar or just to be quiet and be passive. But Rebbe, according to this first b'risa, accepts the sheet of Rabbi Meir Lakula, allowing the coin to check out the Neget Taras in a case of a Muzgar. Because Muzgar is an earlier stage. Now let's just understand the difference here between the Mukhlat and the Muzgar. In the case of a Muzgar, right, he's in quarantine. He's allowed to live in the Yishuv of Eretz Yisrael, in the walled cities of Eretz Yisrael. Once he's confirmed, and that makes him into a Mukhlat, then he has to go Chutz Machna. He's not allowed to enter to Machna Yisrael. There are other dinim that apply to a Mukhlat. For example, he's got to wear rent clothes, and he has to yell out, Tomei, Tomei. He has to let his hair grow. And as we said at the outset, he is banished from Machna Yisrael. So that's the case of a Mukhlat. Now we have the case of the Muzgar, who's allowed to remain within the camp. And according to this price, the Rebbe is a is telling us that in the case of a Muzgar, we can allow the Kohen to check out the Nega because he made the clear in Tar. And otherwise, it's more or less the same status that he's in now. He remains a Muzgar. In the case of a Mukhlat, however, what happens is that as a result of the fact that he's a mukhlat, I just shut this off, sorry. Then we cannot allow the coin to make this re'iyah, to make this examination. Why? Because he might confirm him as a mitzora. And the Gemara asks for Tanya Ipcha, we have a Bryce that has it just in the opposite direction. And Rebbe accepts Rabbi Meir, Dafka in the case of a mukhlat, And Rabbi Yossi in the case of a Muzgar. Everything in the opposite direction. And now the Gemara is going to try to analyze 
these two versions of Rebbe and understand the compelling logic of each version of Rebbe. So again, according to the second b'risa, Rebbe allows, like Rebbe Meir, the examination of a mitzorah in the case of a mukhlat. But he's machmir like Rabbi Yossi in the case of a muzka. Just the opposite of what we said in the first price. Tanoihi aliba de Rebbe, what is at the heart of the issue? Mar savar savta di alma adifle, umar savar savta di ishto adifole. We're going to have a machlokis here about what might disturb the Mitzorah's simchas yantu. And it all depends upon weighing two possibilities. One is to bring him back into the machne, but at the same time prohibit him to have relations with his wife. And the other option is to leave him in the state in which he cannot enter into the machne, but He's allowed to have relations with his wife. There's going to be a trade-off in each direction. So let's go back again and review what happens when a muskar becomes a mukhlat. As a result of becoming a mukhlat, he gets sent out of the machna. He is still allowed to have a relationship with his wife. So that's the state of a muzgar. Once he's a muklat, then if the coin determines that he's healed, he's allowed to re-enter to the machna, but paradoxically, he is enjoined from having relationships with his wife. Because now he goes through a period of seven days of Tara. And during those seven days of Tara, although he's allowed to re enter into the Machna, he's not allowed to have relations with his wife. The Gemara is going to derive this from Tsukin. So let's understand now, if we can, the Machlokas between these two versions of Rebbe. Again, we're talking about the coin examining a mitsora musgar to determine whether or not he should become a mukhlat or he's tar and he could be released totally. In the case of a mukhlat, we want to determine whether or not he could enter into the period of purification of Tara, in which for seven days he prepares himself for Tara, but he's enjoined from having relations with his wife. So now let's go through the two Bryces. According to Bryce number one, Rebbe allows the Kohen, the Kohen to do a Re'ia, a Bedika, in the case of a Muzgar. Now, again, it might lead up to the possibility that he become a mukhlat and then he has to get out of the mach. And Rebbe will prohibit a bedikas mitzora in the case of a mukhlat, where the purpose of the Bedika might mean that he's healed and he starts the process of Tara. But again, as we said before, he'll be enjoined from having a relationship with his wife during Yantif, because we're talking about Yantif. Now, according to the second Raisa, Rebbe 
will not allow for a bidika of a mitzora who's musgar, because again, that might lead to his getting thrown out of the machna if he becomes a muchlot. But Rebbe is matir, the bidika of a muchlot, which would mean that if he's healed, he can rejoin the machna, even though he'll be enjoined from having a relationship with his wife. So let's start backwards. Let's start with the, the second, Brysa number two. According to Brysa number two, when we analyze the mindset of the Mitzorah, and we try to figure out in this uh, toss-up where he would be, where, what would be his preference. So the answer is that Savta de Ishto Adifale, Rebbe is going to accept Rabbi Meir Shita in the case of a Mukhlat. Again, on Cholomoid, of course. If he determines that he's still Tame, so he's still Tame, nothing has changed, just status quo. However, if he determines that he's Tar, he's allowed to re enter the Machta Yisrael even at the expense of being usher to his wife. And that's called Savta di Alma Adifole. And that reflects the sheet of the second Bryce. So his main primary desire at this point in life, when he has this conflict, is to rejoin the Machna. And if in the case of a Mukhlat, who has been ejected, evicted, evicted from the Machna, he He's just plotting, so to speak, for the coin to determine that he can re-enter the machna and he can enter into the purification period, even though it means that he'll have to sacrifice a relationship with his wife. But that's less important to him than living bitzavta. Bitzavta the alma. Bitzavta alma means uh, together with the people in the machna. Now let's go on and turn the clock back to the first price, price number one. Oh, wait a minute. Let's finish up Raisa number two. In what scenario does Rebbe prohibit the Kohen from making an examination? That's in the case of a Musgar. Why? Because the Musgar is allowed to live in the camp. And if the Kohen sees the Negan and determines that he's a Mukhlat, he'll have to go out of the camp. Now we go back to the first Raisa. In the first b'risa, Rebbe is going to allow for a B'dikas Kohen in a Muzgar case, but not in a Mukhla case. Why? Because Savta de Ishto Adifale, what's primary in his, uh, shall we say, hierarchy of values, is to spend Yontif with intimacy with his wife. Even if it means, as a result, he might have to be put away from the machna. He'll be excluded and sent out of the machna. So therefore, if we're talking about a muchlot, then the Kohen could examine him because he might determine that he's tar. And if he determines that he's par, then that's pure game, right? He's just one second. So we're talking about, I'm sorry, what I meant to say, we're talking about a musgar. That's what I meant to say. So in the case of a musgar, Divre Rabbi Meir, meaning Rebbe is going to allow it, the examination. Why? Because if the coin determines that he's par, if the coin determines that he's par, 
and he was only a Muzgar, then he doesn't even need a purification process. That's in the case of a Muzgar. On the other hand, if let's say he's a Muchlat, then if he determines that he's tar, now he has to undergo a seven-day period of tara, in which case he's also, he's enjoyed from his wife. Even though paradoxically he can now re-enter the machna, but we're holding now that savta de ishto ad default. Now the Gemara questions one of the basic assumptions that underlies the entire sugi that we learned. The name of the muchlat mutu b'tashmet shamito. That after he becomes a muchlat, he's a la- You know, I mean to say, even though he's a muchlat, he's mutu b'ichto until the coin determines that he's tar. In that's true. For Tanya, and I'll prove it to you from a Bryce. Vayoshav, olo shivas yom. So all the psukim we're going to learn are in Vayikra Perikidalin. And the Torah says that he has to pitch his tent for seven days. Chutzli olo. Outside of the olo. She oser v'tash So according to this first Tana, in the Brisa, we assume that chutzli olo mi chutzli ishto. Ein olo el ishto, shenem alech emor lehem shubo lachem li olech. That's after, after the Prisha at Matan Torah. So alechem is ishto. So during the period of purification, he's asur v'tash v'shamitu bi ishto. So the pasuk of Yashav Mikutz La'olo is a reference to the seven-day period of Tara after he was a Mukhlat, and now the coin says he's finished. He's there's no longer Saras. He was Nirpa, he was healed from his Saras. Now, all this is only during the purification period, it doesn't apply earlier. And it's derived from that post coin Tanakam. Rabbi Yehuda offers an alternative source to derive this halacha. And there, I'm sorry, in Yechezkel, where Yechezkel dedicates a part of at least Eric Memdal to the Mitzorah, he says, Shiva Siyamim Yitzchru Lo. That during this period of purification, he has to count seven, seven days. And we darshan, says Rabbi Yehuda, you may sphero, below you may chiluto. Sphero means the seven days of Tara. And during that period of time, he is enjoined from having a relationship with his wife. As we saw in the post of Yosha Bichutzel of Shivas Yomim. And during these, you may sphere he's asur. However, while he's a mukhlat, he's mutta. And that's derived from this mute. Shivas yomim yispru lo, you may sphero, velo you may chiluto. That the isur tashvish amita only applies during you may asphira, which are the seven days of Tara, and not earlier during the period even when he's a mukhlat. Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda, Omer, Shivas Yimei Sfiro, Kalvachomer, Yimei Chiluto. Meaning that according to this sheet of Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Yehuda, if during the days of counting Zion for, as, as part of his Tahara process, the Torah nevertheless enjoins him from having a relationship with his wife, how much more so during the days of Hezger. And, of course, when he's a Muchlot. So we have in our Machlokas Tanoim whether or not a Mitzorah Muchlot is allowed to have relations with his wife.
Now, once he's a mukhal, as we said, he's also b'machne. Once the Kohen examines him and determines that he's finished with his Torah, he's allowed to re-enter the machna, and that starts his seven sphere of Tara, of purification. So we're much more mekil after he makes the transition from Mukhlat to Tara, to Zion, Sphere Zion, you made Tara, because we allow him to re-enter into the machna after once he enters into the days of Tara, and if during the days of Tara he's also betash mitamito with his wife, then how much more so with a kalvachomer during Yemei Chaluto. Chiluto. The Omer Rabbi Chia. Now we have to know what is Rebbe's opinion. So Rabbi Chia says, Dante Lifnei Rebbe, I said to Rebbe, Rebbe, you taught us that Yosam lo hayalo luziyahu ela bimei chiluto. When was Yosam, the son of Uziyahu, conceived? And it was during the days of chaluto, of chiluto. Now, if it's during the days of chiluto, it means that there's no isu tashvimita during the days of chiluto. And Rebbe confirms that indeed that's what he taught. So it's interesting. And this is the paradox that we saw in the Tanakhama, Rabbi Yehuda Vapraisa, against Rabbi Yosef Rabbi Yehuda, that after during Yemei Chiluto, he's with his wife, but it becomes also when he enters into the next stage, which is Yemei Tara. Now, if that be the case, if we're holding like the Svara of Savta de Ishto at and he prefers having that intimacy with his wife during Yontif, even if it means he cannot enter to the Machna, we now understand that Brysa, that Rebbe forbids the examination of a mitzora muchlat during Yantif. Because if he's a mitzora muchlat, and the, and the Kohen sees him and determines that he enters into Tara period, he's going to lose his relationship with his wife, so to speak. But Michael Mifugi, what about this machlokas here, about how he derived these halachas? Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Yudha, Samar, Gali Rachmona Bimei Sfiro, the Kolsh Kei Bimei Chiluto. Once the Torah has taught us that during the days of purification, he counts seven days, and he's also with Hashemito, how much more so during the previous period of time of Bimei Chiluto, where we said he's Chutz Lamachna, now he's Umar Sovar, Rabbi Yehuda holds my de Goli Goli, Umay de Lo Goli Lo Goli. In other words, we're not going to derive anything from a Kalvachomer here. The Torah only revealed that there's a prohibition of Ishto during Sfira Simei Tara, and the Torah never said anything with regard to Yemei Chiluto. Now, again, Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yotzi disagree as to whether or not a Kohen who sees the Re'ia of a Tzaras, whether he has the discretion to make the decision as to whether he will declare him Tommy or not. But everybody agrees that the Tuma depends upon the declaration of the Kohen. So the Gemara Yesla Mamer, the Kubi Kohen, Talia Milsa, and Gemara says in, no one can become Tome with Tumas Tzaras without a declaration of the Kohen. And this is derived from the Pasuk, Biyom Hera Os Bo. The Pasuk is in Perkut Gimel of Sefer Vayikra. And we're talking about a person who is covered with Taras from head to toe. And such a person is considered Tar. That's the paradox. If a small portion of his flesh returns to normal, he becomes Tome, since the Taras no longer covers his entire body. 
And the Brisa focuses on the opening word of the phrase of this verse, Ubayo. And we read it as a mute. When it says Ubayom Hiraos, the day that healthy flesh is observed on it, it shall become Tome, Yom, Yesh Yom Shataroebo, Vyesh Yom Shaiataroebo. There are days in which the Kohen could delay examining the Tsaras and declaring him as a Mitzorah. And what are those days that Iyataroebo, Chosan Chinolid Nega, a Chosan after his marriage, Get Shiva Simea Mishta, we don't want to upset those Shiva Simea Mishta, and therefore we will delay Riyas Saras until after the Shiva Simea Mishta. Lo Ulebeso Ulexuso. So we're going to be make ill and delay the Riyah, not only in the case of Lo, where his body has Saras, but there are two other categories of Saras, and that's Torah Sabatim and Torah Begodim. And in those cases, likewise, we will delay it until after the young. So the examination of the Kohen is postponed until after, let's say, in the case of a Chosan, the seven days of celebration. And that's exactly what we do with regard to Yontif, Nosan Lot Shiva Simea Regal. We will not examine the Tzaras until after the seven days of the regal divrei, Rabbi Yehuda. And Rabbi says, I don't need that drosha ubayom. Harehu omer v'tziva kohen ufinu es habayis. With regard to tzuma, to nigei batim, the Torah says that the kohen notifies the people, first clear out all the kalim from the house. Because once I declare that the house is pame, then all the kalim inside the house will become Tomei. But we see that he's delaying the process of declaring it Tomei for the sake of saving the kalim from becoming Tomei. The imam tinin lo, if we allow delaying the examination of the Kohen and his declaration of Tumah, l'dvar meaning for hefse mamon of the kalim, is kolshken l'dvar mitzvah, how much more so during the Chasan's Shiva Simea Mishta, which is a mitzvah, or during Yantif, which of course is Samachta B'chagecha, and we can delay the inspection, the examination of the Kohen of the Tsaras. My Beit Nayu, is there a practical difference here between the original Drosha of Ubayom and, and the a derivation of Rabbi Yehuda, Om Rabbi Mashmos Darshan Imikabinai. They're, they're only arguing about how to interpret the Sukim in the Torah. But there's no nafkamina in the substance of the Halach. But Rav Amar, Rav disagrees, Tvar Rishusi Kabinai. What is Rav's position? Are you allowed to delay the B'dikas coin for the sake of a Dvar Rishus? Rebbe says it's permitted. And Rebbe has an analogy, an equation between Taras HaGuf and Taras HaBayas. And if in Saras Habayis for Advar we allow delay of the examination and the determination of the Tumor, the, the, the establishment of the Tumor, then we'll do so for Advar Mitzvah as well. However, Rabbi Yehuda says that for the sake of Advar Rishus, we do not allow delaying the examination of the Kohen. Ah, you'll ask me, what about the case of Nige Batim, where the Torah says, And the answer is that 
the Torah is going to be more machmer on what's called Tuma Yotis Migufo than Tuma in Begadin or in Batin. So that, according to Rabbi Yehuda, we will only allow, based on the Josh of Ubayom, postponing the examination of the Kohen for a Dvar Mitzvah, but not for a Dvar Rishus. I, in the case of Batim, Ubino Es Abayis, we allow for delaying the examination simply for a Dvar Rishus. And the answer is, that's because of the kula, the special kula of nige batim vis-a-vis tzaras. So in tzaras, if it's not for the sake of a mitzvah, then the Kohen has to do the examination immediately according to Rabbi Yehud. And now we look on the top of the as a general rule, Kli eights, if it doesn't have a base keyboard, that's called Pshute Kli eights, it's not Makabal Tum. But here, in the case of Nigi Abatim, the Torah was Machber, it's a special Chidush, and these Kalim are Makabal Tum. And therefore, the Torah, when it says, take out these Kalim from the bias, that it's, they shouldn't become contaminated with Tum, included in that is Pshute Kli eights and Kli Evan. So once is a Chidush here, in a halach that doesn't apply in general in Tumah, therefore we cannot derive from that, according to Rabbi Yehuda, any conclusions about Nigei Adam or Nigei Pagadim, for that matter, that, that we should delay the Re'iyas, the Vedikas coin for the sake of a Dover Shus. Now, one question that I have here on this sugya is, if the Gemara wants to explain, according to Rabbi Yehuda, justify why Mehasam from Nigei Batim Lo why don't the Gemara just say, because you want to derive Mitzorah, which is Tuma Yotzis Migufo, and maybe the Torah would be more Machber in Tuma Yotzis Migufo in the case of Dvar Shuz. The Gemara doesn't offer that, possibly because the Gemara is dealing with Nigei Batim, Begadim as well, and in the case of Nigei Begadim, we're not dealing with Tuma Yotzis Miguf. Also, another discussion that we have to address here, if we would learn this be'in, would be Shiva Simei Mishnah. Is that Doraisa? The assumption here is that it's Doraisa, but we know that Shiva Simei Mishnah is Drabon. In any event, here's where we're going to stop here on the top of Daf Ches Ahmed Ahmed Aleph, and that'll be tomorrow's Daf Nimir Tashem.